Welcome to the Witchy Work Wishes podcast, a place to find your weekly inspiration for bringing your personal witchcraft practice into your business, work, and office. Welcome to Witchy Work Wishes. Thank you so much for joining me today. I'm your host, Charlene, and this episode is all about Yule, which starts tomorrow, December 21st. But first, I'd like to share some things I did over the weekend to help with my own personal practice. Now, this past weekend, I started planning for my office servitor. Not just planning, but how I am actually going to activate him. Now, back at the end of May, I had an episode with Yaxel all about the servitors, and, you know, I was sold. Well, I knew I wanted to have one for the office um, which is why I reached out to him. So honestly, um, I do want one for my home now too, but I knew I needed some guidance on this topic and Yaxel was amazing. And he helped lay out the steps for working with servitors. Now a servitor is an image or a form or something that you give energy to. When your servitor is alive and ready to work, it is usually for a very specific singular purpose, such as um, protection or guidance or, you know, accomplishing a particular task. Now the servitor carries out the task assigned to it. And as a practitioner, it's your job to keep your servitor alive and happy. So it is not only able to do the work you need done, but also wants to work with you. <laughs> so I know, um, June to now is a long time to get the process going for my office, but Honestly, it took that long to find the right servitor to match up the timing needed and all of the good stuff to have and work with my first servitor. Now, I am going to be working with Annika, who has been a guest on this podcast multiple times, and we are going to activate the office servitor under a full December moon, also called a cold moon. Um, But we are going to work on all of the things to make this very magical and very powerful. And honestly, just having him, the servitor, here now is giving me energy. I know he is ready to be activated. He is a beautiful cast iron crow, and I just know, deep in my heart, he is going to be everything I hope for. And I'm going to make sure he has all of the energy and power to do his job. I'm going to sound a little silly, but I honestly do already feel his energy, (laughs) and he is not even activated yet. So I think this was just meant to be. He is the right one. And everything that's lining up to activate him is perfect. Now, I made um, my holiday gifts this weekend. I was trying to duplicate, in a cute way, a linen spray I used when the boys were little um, that was made from lavender. So the kid spray was called No More Monsters. And it had two very different uh, end results for me and the boys. You know, for them, it was about protection. For me, it meant two sleepy boys drifting off in peace for a great night's sleep. Now, over the years, of course, as they grew older, the label and uh, words, no more monsters, really did not have the same meaning, (laughs) right? Uh, But the lavender pillow spray certainly had the same effects. And my homemade holiday gifts this year for them really does duplicate everything that the original sprays had, but I'm making it myself with my own personal blend of ingredients, um, my own personal spell, and my own magical touches. So what I used is moon water. Now I used um, the new moon that took place on the 13th, power number, right? I used uh, witch hazel that I really do feel complements the natural lavender smell. Um, I used dried lavender from my own personal garden. This was a long time coming as I harvested it and started drying it back in October. Uh, See what I did? I added a dried rosebud for love. I added rosemary um, to help them, the boys, uh, remember their dreams. I added lavender essential oil. Um, I used the doTERRA line for this one. Um, And then I added uh, small amethyst crystals, a couple of rose quartz uh, crystals, and black tourmaline to the jars. Uh, Small dark brown glass jars or bottles with little spray nozzles, nozzles, (laughs) didn't say that right, uh, were used. But I just loved it. It was so much fun, certainly activating everything on the new moon and then creating it over the weekend. So that was very magical, and I put lots of good energy into it. So with the sprays, I'm also going to be gifting each of the boys a lepidolite stone. This is a 
really nice purple and pink stone that can be used to help us with insomnia and help us with restful, you know, sleep in general. So I had all of the stones, the lepidite, the amethyst, rose quartz, black tourmaline, charging under the new moon, um, as mentioned. So there's just a lot of good energy for the boys. And the sleepy time hand solve that I made for the boys was also super fun. I used Annika's guidance from the podcast with her on tallow magic for this project. And the solve turned out amazing. I even kept a little bit for myself since I loved it so much. Well, you know, I didn't feel like a card pull this weekend. I didn't feel like doing any spells other than the sleepy, you know, safe sleeping spell gifts for the boys. But I did my best to enjoy the holiday spirit this weekend, just kind of in general. But it was hard. On Tuesday, yesterday, as if you guys are listening to this on Wednesday, um, the boys are coming home. So I found myself so excited and really it was hard to concentrate on doing anything else. <laughs> doing the gift projects uh, helped a little bit, but I don't know. I'm just so happy it's finally here when everybody is going to be home again. Now that said, I did some more wrapping, some meal planning. You know, it's all about eating, right? Um, and I actually did host some friends on Sunday night for drinks and appetizers. It, it, it was a great weekend, but really hard to wait for my two most favorite people to walk in the door. Even the animals are picking up on my energy. I think they know the boys are coming home. Let's see, our beautiful moon right now is in her first quarter phase, which is a halfway point to her full moon stage next week. And what are some good first quarter phase things to be mindful of right now? Well, it's a time of action. It's a time for moving forward. You know, as the moon is gaining strength and momentum, so too should we. This is not a time to slow down or curl up and think about things. Just the opposite, I promise. Move, gain speed, and tackle projects right now. This is the final run before the year ends. So get it done. All right, let's head over to the amazing Yule traditions that are starting tomorrow. Yule, my favorite time of year. Now, I started off last year's Yule episode the very same way, and nothing has changed. <laughs> it is still my most favorite time of the year. Now, since I did a previous podcast all about Yule 2022, I didn't want to completely recreate the wheel, so to speak. So I pulled some highlights from that episode and then fluffed with some new stuff for this Yule 2023. Now, Yule is the winter solstice. And the word Yule comes from a Norse word, which means wheel. As the Norse thought the sun to be a big wheel of fire that rolled towards the earth and away from it. It is the longest day and the darkest time of our year. This holiday is part of the pagan wheel of the year, which has eight celebrations for our festivals and for our seasons. The four festivals are Imbolc, Beltane, Lunasa, and Samhain. And the four seasons, specifically related to where the sun is located, are spring equinox, summer solstice, autumn equinox, and winter solstice. Now, Yule honors the return of the sun and light after the longest night of our year. Yule is typically going to be around December 21st each year. Our colors for Yule are going to be red and green, silver and gold, white and blue. Crystals and stones for Yule are the bloodstone, clear quartz, diamonds, emeralds, rubies, and garnets. Our herbs and flowers will be our thistle, poinsettias, lilies, chamomile, ivy, uh, mistletoe, peppermint, rosemary, and sage. Now for our oils and incense, we're going to want to use our cedar, cinnamon, cloves, yes, 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 frankincense, <laughs> juniper, myrrh, peppermint, love, pine, and sweet orange. Our trees for Yule are going to be our cedar, juniper, pine, holly, fir, um, let's see, apple, birch, chestnut, and citrus. Now the two gods for Yule are the holly king god and the oak king god, who we know are battling it out right now. So last year I pulled the top three pagan Yule time traditions, which are the Yule tree, the Yule log, and of course bonfires and candles. So I'll quickly review those and then move over to some new stuff that we can do this year. 
Now, Yule began many centuries ago, long before Christmas came into the holidays. The winter solstice, which um, Yule celebrates, is of course the shortest day of the year, so it is used to invite the light and the sun back for the coming days. Now, as we know, there are many days of winter ahead of us <laughs> when Yule is celebrated, but the shortest day of the year actually is the 21st of December. So each day after that, a little bit more light than the previous day comes in, thus inviting more sun and light into the new year. Now for early pagans, the Yule tree represented the tree of life, which for many represents the balance of life and how all things are connected. This special evergreen tree was carefully picked out as it was to represent protection for the home and to call back the sun. The Yule tree was originally brought into the home so the woodland spirits would be kept warm during the cold winter months, and treats were hung on the branches as offerings for the woodland spirits to eat. Now, on top of the tree, a five-pointed star would be placed to represent the five elements, air, fire, water, earth, and spirit. Now, for the pagan Yule tree, they are brought into the home to bring in abundance and health and healing. And the evergreen trees are specifically used since they represent these very things. Evergreens are long-term, and the homes want to retain that evergreen or ever energy into the home's energy. Our traditional Yule decorations are going to be orange slices, which represent the sun coming back into the next part of the wheel that is starting. So cinnamon sticks were used, which, which represent protection and abundance. Anything with the star shape was used. Um, you would find them strung up or placed on trees with the cinnamon sticks and the orange slices. Now later, candles were added to the trees. Um, that pagan tradition represented the calling of the sun and inviting of the light. And a quick fun note, back around 1840, Queen Victoria was said to come back from um, a Germany trip where she saw a Yule tree and wanted to have that same type of tree in her home too. And popularity of the Christmas tree and the tradition grew from there. Now, Norse tradition of the Yule log was to bring in protection and prosperity. Now, the different type of trees, of course, would spark different magical properties. Aspen is tied to spiritual understanding. Pine is tied to prosperity. Birch is tied to fertility. And oak is tied to strength and wisdom. So the first use of the Yule log was a big, long branch that was burned just at one end in the fireplace because it was so long, right? <laughs> Only one end would fit. Um, and they kept the fire going by moving the branch in or the tree in as the log burned. Now, later, the log would be chopped to about a foot, you know, foot and a half in length from, from the tree or from one owns property. Uh, the tree or the log could also be gifted to them. Uh, but then it was dressed with pine cones and mistletoe and cinnamon sticks, holly, dried cranberries, maybe other berries that were found earlier in the year during their harvest times. So the, the energy in these things that were collected earlier were said to bring life and light to the Yule log. And the Yule log was used in the fireplace during the mid-winter celebrations then. When the fire was done, a piece of the Yule log was kept to start the next year's Yule log. And the ashes were saved as um, good luck and used for plantings in the spring. Of course, we know how good the wood ashes are. They're full of potassium, which our plants love. Now, a more modern take on the Yule log is going to be doing all of these same magical things, but instead of burning the log in a fireplace, we're going to insert and light three candles into the log. These candles will be typically one of each, a green, a red, and a gold candle. And then each of the items used to dress the Yule log will represent something specific. Again, cinnamon, good luck. Cloves for clarity and protection. Dried oranges represent the sun and you know bringing in the light. Star anise is for purification and psychic abilities. Pine cones, I love pine cones. Um, they are for the evergreen, the coming from the trees that are still green in the coldest winter months. They represent protection and prosperity. So mistletoe is used for, not used for, uh, represents healing and fertility. Uh, rosemary, um, of course, that uh, is known to clean the air and make way for new beginnings. Ivy can be used for healing and protection. And there are other things, right? There are other things you can add to a Yule log, like 
lavender, pomegranates, and, and baby's breath. So the image of the Yule log has also transformed into something edible, too. And we know this to be the Yule log cake, which is a perfect thing to bake during the holidays. Now, this is a chocolate spongy cake that is rolled around a filling and then decorated to look like an actual like Yule log. You can see a beautiful spiral pattern on the inside of the cake that is meant to kind of mimic the rings of a tree. And there are usually garnishments of you know, like little mushrooms made out of meringue to make it look even more realistic. A nice dusting of powdered sugar is sprinkled on top to make it look like snow. And you can also place little sprigs of you know, pine branches and berries um, placed around the side to make it look even more realistic. So I actually made my first Yule log cake last year and I'll be doing it again for Christmas Eve this year. So the third one was um, that I pulled for last year was uh, Yule bonfires and candles. And I think you guys have heard me say many, many times how important the power of fire is to, to me. It, it always has been. So specifically for Yule though, the fire is going to represent the new beginnings, rebirth, rest, gratitude, and the balance of light and dark. And again, I saved part of my Yule Fire ashes and coal from last year's Yule Fire, and I'll be starting my 2023 Yule Fire with it. Now, if you're looking to incorporate some new things for, for you know, for this year's Yule, like I am, <laughs> this next part is just for you. And talking with Justin over the last two weeks, the Pagan Padre, it really inspired me to work with the sun a little bit more than I normally do. And you know that fire energy, which I love so much. Speaking of, let's all take a moment and send Justin some quick pink vibes and some Leo vibes for the little one that is due with their family next August. Now for Yule and the traditional celebration of inviting the sun into the darkest time of the year, I would like to work with oranges more this year, specifically dried orange slices so I can tie them into a string and make, you know, like a really cute rustic garland. Now, something that I can hang from my fireplace mantle maybe, or something that I can hang um, around a wreath or something. <laughs> I know I can mix um, other citrus uh, fruits in to make it maybe a little bit more colorful by using lemons and limes, but I think I'm gonna go a more traditional route and look and it's just gonna, I'm just gonna be using the, the orange slices. So I'm also going to take whole cloves and push them into the orange slices, specifically five, one um, for each slice to mimic the five-pointed star placed on trees that represents the five elements. I'm going to cut as many orange slices as I can and have the slices as even as I can make them so they are somewhat consistent throughout the string. I'm hoping to have lots and lots of orange slice circles add the cloves, and then spread them out on the baking sheet to dry in the oven. Now, I can only imagine what my home will smell like as those are drying. Yum! Um, I'm going to use super, super low heat, probably like the lowest one my oven has, and let them dry um, over a couple of hours. I'm going to repeat until I have all my slices dried, and then from there, I'm going to keep them safe until the boys and I can have a family night and string them together. Now, I am thinking of incorporating cranberries, too, not sure yet on those. I believe the orange slices will keep full cup keep, excuse me, for a couple of years. I'm not sure about the cranberries, even if they're dried. Uh, the red and orange color is really appealing to me though, especially if I can drape it over some greenery, but we'll, we'll see. I also like the idea of incorporating a witch's knot with the orange slices instead of doing maybe a full garland. Or you know, what, I don't know, if I have enough orange slices, maybe I'll do both. Really, I would like to grab all of those uh, top things listed earlier though. Cinnamon for good luck, Clothes for clarity and protection, dried oranges uh, to represent the sun, star anise for purification and psychic abilities, and pine cones, which I love, uh, for the evergreens that represent protection and prosperity. So those five things on a witch's knot strand would be amazing. And then whether I make a garland out of it or something else, um, that's really going to be one of my big projects for, for this year. So another Yule activity I'll be doing this year is to incorporate the wild hunt that begins with our winter solstice tomorrow. Now I have dabbled in some fae work. I am certainly doing projects in my yard to attract fairies, but I would like to slow myself down and be outside and listen. See what I can hear in the other world and look across my beautiful night's sky. 
Now, if you are not familiar with the Wild Hunt, this is something that ties back to, to Germany, England, Ireland, and Scandinavian areas. And it happens during the 12 days of Yule and winter solstice. Now, depending on what tradition you follow more closely, uh, the hunt could be led by Odin with the Norse. It could be led by the green man of the forest coming from traditions in Ireland and England. It could be led by Woden uh, from Germany, or maybe even Frau Holly, who is the elder mother of the Alps. So this hunt back with our ancestors was something to be celebrated. But common to many things being changed with the new religion of Christianity, making or trying to make most things pagan look bad, it somehow has been to be a really evil, bad thing that was led by demons. And that's just, it's just not the case, or it's not what I think. The hunt is a happy time. It's a time of celebration for those who worked hard. It's a time of celebration for the light returning soon. It's a time when the wilderness and all of the wild spirits and dryads come to us. Now, if you're looking to honor this older tradition like I am, a good way uh, to celebrate is your own personal offering of elderflowers, dried flax flowers, and flax seeds. You know, something that you can hang for the 12 days of our winter solstice. Now, elderberry is a very good thing in honoring Odin, um, the green man, and Frau Holly. And I think I mentioned one of my mom's traditions a while ago. I can't remember what episode, um, but she grew up using bayberry during Christmas. And if you don't remember, um, growing up for me, my mom would always light a bayberry candle on Christmas Eve and let it burn down overnight, or, you know, until out. Now, the bayberry tradition actually comes from colonial times. The settlers needed light, <laughs> which at that time came from mainly candles. Um, but when they burned them, the smoke had such a bad smell since they typically used animal fat um, as their candles. Now the bayberry bush, though, when the berries were boiled, would create a waxy substance that could be skimmed off and used for candles. And when lit, oh my goodness, this candle smelled so amazing, like you know, berries and pines and uh, the woods. But it took a whole bunch of boiling bayberries just to get one candle. So they were only used on special occasions. And the bayberry is known for money, and good fortune. So using this type of candle on Christmas Eve helps bring in these wishes. It is said you should light the candle when the first star appears and it should continue to burn out until after midnight. So it is also known that you can't or should not put the candle out. You really do need to let it burn down all of the way on its own. Now bayberry and elderberry obviously are two very different berries. So I don't mean to tie the two together, a bayberry is a small round fruit that grows on shrubs, and the elderberry is a really dark uh, purple colored fruit that grows on trees. Now the bayberry is waxy, right? Making it really good for candles, and the fruit smells really, really good. Elderberries, we know, are the super fruit. Uh, they're used in a bunch of our ancestors' medicine uh, remedies, and honestly, they're still used um, a lot today. So I just, I don't know why, I just thought of my mom's tradition <laughs> when we were talking about berries this time of year. Okay. Back to the wild hunt. So it is something that certainly is not new, right? By any means, it goes back way, way back in our timelines. Now, I know winter solstice goes back, I believe, to our stone ages. I read on there, but I'm not sure about the wild hunt itself. Fair guesses is about the same. I'm not sure. Uh, either way, though, it's something that I will be adding to my Yule celebrations this year. So it is a little bit new for, or newer for me. So the third thing I'll be doing this year, and spoiler alert, oh my gosh, I have a whole podcast on it next week, um, but it's shadow work. And I'm not going to go too deep into it right now since you're going to get a wonderful earful next week, but shadow work during Yule and winter solstice, to me, just makes sense. Yule starts around the 21st of December and goes for 12 days. So this year it will wrap up on January 1st. During this time, I'm going to plan around the moon phases as well. I know in the opener, I mentioned the servitor work I'm doing at my office on the full moon next week. But guess what happens right after that? Mm -hmm. Yep, the moon starts waning. And that energy tied to the end of the year energy and the winter solstice Yule energy. Oh, come on. Oh, my goodness. I think it is the perfect time to do some deep shadow work. All right. Yule recap. 
Yule is typically around December 21st each year, and it goes through the 1st of January. It's directly tied to winter solstice. Our colors, red, green, silver, gold, white, and blue. Crystals and stones are going to be the bloodstone, clear quartz, diamonds, emeralds, rubies, and garnets. Herbs and flowers will be our thistle, chamomile, ivy, mistletoe, peppermint, rosemary, and sage. And for our oils and incense, we're going to want to grab our cedar, cinnamon, cloves, frankincense, juniper, myrrh, peppermint, pine, and sweet orange. Trees for Yule are cedar, juniper, pine, holly, fir, apple, and birch, chestnut, and citrus. Deities are the Oak King and the Holly King. Great things to do for Yule are going to be making a Yule log. Again, that is going to be a piece of wood or a log that has decorations like holly, mistletoe, the pine cones, evergreens, and three candles. You can use it as your table centerpiece and then burn it in your bonfire later. Um, even more powerful if you have any remnants of last year's fire with your 2022 Yule log in it uh, to start this new fire in 2023. If you don't, be sure to save a part of this year's fire so you can start next year's 2024 Yule fire with it. Now, decorating a Yule tree is perfect for the holiday. Even better if it's a live tree that you can possibly plant in the spring. Um, be sure to top it with a five-point star representing the five elements. Other good things to do for Yule are going to be making a witch's bell, bake something for the holidays, make or buy your own gifts for your loved ones, decorate your altar, celebrate with fire, with your candles and fireplace. Of course, you can do a little fire magic and write down what you want to let go of for the new year and burn it. Um, and then, of course, new things I'm going to be doing this year are going to be making dried orange slice garlands, celebrating the wild hunt, and doing some much-needed shadow work at the end of the Yule. For bringing in our witchy work wishes with Yule, I really do think just like fall and Samhain, you know, it's a dealer's choice here. You know, my office, and again, I am a business owner, so I can pretty much do what I want since it's my own space, but every room is fully decorated and it makes me so happy. It truly does bring me joy. And I'm finding that it's bringing just as much joy to my clients because every time they walk in, somebody is saying something about how much they appreciate the work and effort that's gone into it. But, you know, decorations in general are at their peak right now. So I would say bring everything in you can to your space, your desk, and your work environment. If you are limited on space, I you know, be frugal and only pick the decorations that really, really mean something to you and your practice. If you are limited on, if you're really limited, you know, meaning your office does not decorate much, um, then have something in your desk drawer. Carry something in your bag or have something on you, like in your pocket. You could draw a sigil on your body, you know, something. Something to keep the magic of Yule and the holidays with you as you work. Well, I do have a poem if you want to stay for that. And I have really, really big news on next week's podcast and the amazing guest that will be joining us. All right, for the poem this week, um, I actually grabbed the one I wrote back in last December so I can include it today because it is just perfect for Yule. And it goes. My favorite time of year is here. I shout it out with joy and cheer. I sing the songs of holiday fun as winter's time has now begun. The air is chilled as solstice starts and warmth takes over all our hearts. With kings of great oak and holly, and Santa's laugh that makes us jolly. Our homes are filled with holiday smells and special Yule witchcraft spells. We bring our loved ones extra joy, and the children get a holiday toy. This time of year, the pine trees call as we make and hang our witch's ball. With cinnamon sticks and mistletoe, we dream of kisses in the snow. The oranges call the sun to come as holidays beat their mighty drum. The Yule log sings what we desire and a piece is saved for next year's fire. My favorite time of year is now. In winter solstice, I do vow. Forever long, my peace will be 
and Yule's bright shining holiday tree. Well, thank you so much for joining me today. I really am happy you are here with me. Okay, next week, we are doing shadow work. And guess who is joining me? You might know her as the Underworld Queen. It's Kristen Ramazana, who specializes in shadow work. And she is going to be my year and guest to help wrap up 2023 perfectly with what shadow work is and how we can start it ourselves. Till then, have a great Yule. If you are celebrating Christmas, I hope your day is magical. And overall, your winter solstice is everything you hoped it would be. I am thinking of you right now and sending all of my holiday wishes to you and your family. And I'll talk with you next week. Thank you for joining me today at Witchy Work Wishes, a place to find your weekly inspiration for bringing your personal witchcraft practice into your business, work, and office. For more information and additional content, please visit me online at witchyworkwishes.com. If you want to send me a personal note, please email me at info at witchyworkwishes.com. And of course, you can follow me on Instagram and Facebook. Just search for Witchy Work Wishes.